Hey guys, it's Michael from Chess Lifestyle, and for those that don't know, um, I am playing in a tournament that I'm also simultaneously running called Journey to Master, which is on the Chess Lifestyle Discord, and tomorrow I have my match, I think this is round 5 of the tournament, um, against one of uh, Chess Lifestyle's biggest fans, Ishir, who has his own channel, Chess In. Uh, go check it out, it's really good content. But um, the point I wanted to make for this video was how should you go about preparing against an opponent you know you're going to play. So, you know, one day you might play in a round robin tournament or even in a Swiss tournament, the pairings might get released the day before and you're wondering, you know, what uh, a strong player should do uh, when they're actually trying to prepare. So what I'm going to show you today is the different resources that I'll use to actually prepare my game, prepare my game, <laughs> prepare my game uh, against a ship and how you should actually think about the preparation, not like just, you know, do mindless like 20, 30 moves of theory in a line that you hope your opponent will play. Uh, no, like uh, how you should actually go about trying to be smart about catching your opponent off guard and uh, trying to maximize your practical chances in the game. So I'm going to switch over to the laptop and I'll see you there. Right, okay, so as you can see, I have set myself just over an hour, like until 9 p.m., to try and get this uh, preparation done. Uh, I don't really know how long it will take, um, maybe an hour is too short, maybe an hour is too long, but uh, I don't want to spend like all night doing this, uh, but I'll try and give you guys as in-depth of a preparation as I can give you. Right, so <clears throat> what we're going to start off with is just taking a look at what Ishir plays. Now I have a slight advantage because I know Ishir as a player and I kind of know his repertoire already, but in case you don't, uh, it's always a good uh, place to start is if you can look up um, uh, their account on Lee Chess or account on chess.com, that can really help. So let's say I didn't, um, you know, I didn't have Ishir's uh, Lee Chess name, um, I could look up his name and then type in Lee Chess afterwards. But luckily for me, um, I have Ish's uh, Lee Chess, so um, no worries there. So you can use openingtree.com and you can just search up uh, their games. And what I would really recommend to do is even if you have the white pieces or you have the black pieces, you just want to take a look at what they play with for both colours. So since for tomorrow I have the white pieces, because I'm going to be spending most of my prep on Ishir playing with the black pieces, I'm first going to just take a look at what he plays for white. Because it might be quite useful um, just to see what kind of positions he's familiar with. So I'm going to set it to rated only. Um, normally I'd set it to just like blitz and maybe some longer time controls as well. Uh, although I know that uh, Ishir doesn't really play much blitz. But normally I would probably choose blitz, rapid and classical as a basis of uh, his games. I would also set the date to probably maybe January the 1st of 2021. So we filter out any old repertoires that are no longer in use. So I'd then click analyze games and take a look. So as we can see, um, Ishir is playing a bunch of games of E4, then a bunch of games of D4. And actually, as you can see these numbers going up, that's actually to do with like when the games were played. So when you saw this D4 move like increase very suddenly for like 30 games or so, that was probably because Ishir was experimenting with D4 for a while. But you can clearly see he's predominantly an E4 player and for one game he trolled his opponent with C3. So, okay, uh, that's good to know. That also is good to know that he doesn't play any Knight F3, doesn't play any C4, which uh, could also be lines I might need to prepare against. Um, although, okay, I'm not preparing against white, I'm just seeing what he plays. So, um, against uh, when he plays e4, um, I just want to have a quick look to see what he plays against uh, everything. So maybe maybe before... Yeah, I, I wonder like how deep I should go into his lines. Maybe for now we'll, we'll leave it there. So let's duplicate uh, this tab and 
I don't know if it's going to let me look up Ashir's games um, twice. I think sometimes openingtree.com doesn't let me do it. Uh, but let's, let's give it a go. Oh, okay, it's working. So, as we can see, we can also have an idea of how well a shear fares against different openings. And as we can see, um, it looks like a shear struggles more with uh, his black repertoire against d4 than his black repertoire against e4. As you can see, d4 is having a higher uh, win rate. Um, it doesn't mean everything, but it means something when we get to a sample size of maybe, I'd say, above 100 games. So that's definitely good to keep in mind as well. Uh, I would say, though, you should be extremely careful with preparing an opening which you don't have in your repertoire. So, for instance, let's say I'm an E4 exclusive player, and I decide, I look at these statistics, and I think, aha, Ishir is weak against D4, and I play 1D4. Now, in every game, he's playing e6. So I bank on Ashir playing e6. And when I play that match tomorrow, I play 1d4. And let's say in the game, he plays knight f6. And I'm completely out of book. And if Ashir has prepared something against me, uh, or he wouldn't have prepared against me because he wouldn't expect d4, but he might uh, have prepared a new line against d4 that he happens to be playing against me for the first time, and I might get tricked. Or for instance, maybe he on on a different Lee Chess account, he plays a different line as black. Like, you never know for sure. So I would be extremely careful with actually changing your repertoire based on your opponent's repertoire. But what I would say is if you do have flexibility, like for instance, for me, uh, I used to be a Knight F3 player. Um, in January of 2021, I learned E4 in depth. And in the last month, I've learned D4 in depth. Uh, and also as black, I've been learning the modern, just as uh, something I've always been interested in, which kind of gives me g3 as well. So given that I've got knight f3, e4, d4, and g3 in my arsenal, I feel conf confident to, you know, actually, you know, maybe I can uh, throw the game into a d4 if I want. So if we first look at Ashir's um, e4, um, he's playing against French. I mean, sorry, he's playing the French as black. And that's interesting to note. Let's have a quick look at d4. Um, he also plays with e6. And on c4, he's playing with knight f6. If knight c3, okay, he's playing the Nimzo. If knight f3, he's playing the Bogo. Okay, that's interesting. So... He plays Nimzo or Bogo against d4. He plays French against e4. We should also look at knight f3. Knight f3, he's tried a few different things from f5, c5. So knight f6. If g3, he's playing with e6 and d5. Okay. So... I have the feeling, I can't say for certain, but um, basically today, uh, Ashir sent me a study as a kind of taunt, which was prep for Michael. And if we look at this study, it says Ratty, which is what I play, uh, what I've played the most actually in competitive play, Knight F3, and he gave this line of C5, C4, Knight c6, knight c3, knight b4, I don't know, some bullshit about alpha 0, queen a4, <laughs> queen c7, the obvious knight d1, queen a5, and knight c2. So clearly, <laughs> basically Ashir is trolling me and um, psych psyching me out, but okay, not, not really, just as a joke. But my point is this, actually, by giving me this piece of information, I'm actually curious whether he's going to play 1c5. Because I've played a shear once before, and this is also what you should do. You should definitely check uh, your games against um, a certain player. And if I look up a shear, 
Um, this was the classical game. He played c5 against me before. And in all my games on the database, like if we just have a look at all of these games uh, of Ponziani Master. But on knight f3, and we're going to look at uh, c5 when, when more games come up. I'll use the power of editing to speed forward this time lapse. Right. So now we have around like 30, 35 now, almost 40 games of C5. If we click on this, as you can see, all the times I am playing this C4, which is exactly what Ishia will expect because when I played Knight F3 last time, I played C4. And in all my opening three games, I played C4 as well. But I can use the knowledge that we discussed earlier about Ashir's repertoire with black. And as we know, against e4, Ashir plays exclusively the French. So, if there are any smart cookies out there who are very, very careful with their prep, they might realize a potential preparation I can pull on Ashir. And that is if I play e4. Uh, sorry, not if I play e4. If I play knight f3 and Ishir plays c5, I can blast out e4 in an instant. And this already will be a psychological win. Of course, e4, c5, knight f3 is by no means a win. But the fact that Ishir plays e6 every game, it will definitely scare him. Now, what I've actually done, uh, <laughs> here is what I made earlier. Um, I already thought about this um, today um, and I decided to uh, prepare this out. Now, now one other thing I should mention is that um, if I play e4, I know that Ashir will play the French and I know that Ashir will prepare this well because actually today's stream, uh, I, I trained chess for four hours today in the morning and Ashir tuned in and I was looking a lot at this bishop d3 line. So Ashir was actually watching a lot of it and we learned a lot of it together. So I know for sure he's going to be thinking that I might play this. So I think it's way too risky, especially since this is more of like a surprise weapon kind of opening and you can prepare against it. It's risky for me to actually go into this line. So I'm thinking of playing knight f3. If Ashir plays c5, I'm going to smash out e4. And I'm going to expect Ashir to go into a really deep think because he already knows that he's been outmaneuvered in the opening. Now, if you know my e4 repertoire against c4, c5, I'm not actually a knight f3 player. I play either knight c3 with f4 or I play b4 wing gambit. So, as I said at the start of the video, I don't want to, you know, uh, mess up myself because, you know, in this position, I don't want to be in a position where... I don't know what I'm doing. But what I'm thinking of doing is if Ashir plays e6, which as a French player, I feel like there's a good chance he will. Either e6 or knight c6. That's that's my that's my guess. On e6, I think I can play b4. And the point is if he takes, I'll play a3, and we've transposed to a wing gambit line. I think this line is exactly the same if I were to play this. I play a3. Ah, it's not quite the same. It's not quite the same. Because in e6, I would be playing takes, bishop takes, c3 and d4. But here I'm playing knight f3 if I were to transpose to this. So on knight f3, um... What I, what I had, um, ah, so I hadn't actually prepared the C takes B for A3. So I guess we should take a look now at what's going on here. So it says black is better, but let's see how much. So what, what are reasonable tries for black? I was thinking D5 is probably the most reasonable of moves. 
it's suggesting some e5. If I take, queen takes. Now this does transpose to a line I know. Now this really does transpose to a line I know. Because what I know with the wing gambit is on e5, c5, b4 takes d5, uh, d5 which is the main line, takes, takes, knight f3. e6 is a move which I know when, in which I play bishop e2, castles, d4, and I get a very good game. And I'll take a look at my preparation in a second on this line. Because if a share goes into this line, takes the pawn, I play a3, he plays d5, I take, that is an exact transposition of this. Just a different move order, you see? So I am reaching a position that I like and know. Whereas Ashir will be having to play just from his own chess, which, you know, is clearly a disadvantage. So, I think I'm covered there, actually. If he plays with d5, I'm just going to take and then um, play bishop e2, which is what I know. So... If he doesn't play d5, and let's say he takes on a3, I feel like that's very nat unnatural of a share. Now, normally against uh, taking on a3, I like to play with d4 and f4. So that could be a drawback of having my knight on f3. But I don't necessarily think it's so bad either. If I take, let's say, queen takes... I'm a pawn down, engine says it's equal. I don't think I mind playing this position. If I play some knight takes a3, bishop b4, bishop d2, let's follow this line for a bit. Let's say it just develops. Already this is plus two. Okay, so that's good to know that I've got pressure here. And if he goes back, wow, okay. <laughs> And black is really struggling to get his king castled. And maybe even stuff like this. So there's definitely room for my opponent to go wrong. So I think that's really promising. But I have this option. So Ashir won't be prepared for e4 by any means. And if he plays with e6, I'm going to play b4. Now here, apart from c takes b4, I feel like he could, might also play d5. And if he plays d5, I've got this prepared, which is e takes. Just kind of copying the engine, really. Bishop b5. And it looks like he's getting rid of his uh, bad light square bishop. Although in this position it's not so bad since the pawn is no longer here. But queen e2. And there's this, there's this whole line where basically I'm going to be putting a lot of pressure on black. And it kind of seems very ridiculous. But how is... Black really dealing with this like I think maybe at some point I will take Maybe this will be weak Maybe I'll play some d4 with tempo bring my bishop to f4 play rookie one king f1 and have a slight advantage Let's I uh, on king d8. I probably yeah, I got this knight g5 attacking here If he plays some rook c8 then he's dropping a7 so, is there any deviations, reasonable deviations he has here? So, I can take bishop b5, queen e2. Yeah, and this, I think this already is looking really good. He can also block with the knight, but that feels very unnatural for a French player. I feel like every French player is going to play bishop d7. On knight c6... We castle knight f6, rook e1, bishop e6. I've at least got this as well. Like, this is already looking practically good. I don't really care about what the engine's saying. Like, this just looks very scary for black, I feel like. Like, apparently, you grab this pawn. Which just feels so unnatural. Like, I don't even know how black would play here. And we've always got this as well. 
So I think I think I'm happy there. I think I'm really happy here. So let's just remind ourselves. So bishop b5. We're gonna go queen e2. He doesn't have to block with the queen. If he blocks with the bishop, hoping for this, then aha, we have this. And if knight f6, bishop takes g f6, and it's just saying the king is gonna be weak. If king f8, it's saying takes takes. And this is literally the point, huh? We're just gonna castle. And just say that this king is weak and these pawns are crippled so any end games will favour me. And I'm not even a pawn down in this variation, so no wonder the position's so strong. So I think I think this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play with knight f3. And I have the feeling he's gonna have prepared this c5. But yeah, I'd say try and think about what um, your opponent plays against e4, what your opponent plays against d4, what they play as white, and just get an idea of like the general openings. And if you can see a clever way how you can trick them out of their uh, own repertoire and still stay within yours, then that can really give you some good practical chances. So um, I guess that's... Uh, my message for you guys and yeah i would love to hear uh your thoughts on my prep and um how you try and prepare against your opponents and of course if you stayed to the end of this video i would really appreciate if you dropped a like um really helps grow the channel so thank you for tuning in and see you next time